NBA 2K18 Rebuild Tutorial Number 1 I guarantee you, you will not see a rebuild of this kind anywhere on YouTube. This is because I do it with the hardest trade and contract difficulty there is available in the game at 100 and also the simulated difficulty is increased to 55. So my rebuilds are brutally hard. And yes, welcome to my 2K18 Lakers rebuild. And the following is a video summary of my 3 hour rebuild journey. So as many of you know, the 2K18 LA Lakers are slowly rising in the west of the addition of Alonso Ball. But the pipe dream of all Lakers users and all Lakers fans is what you see in that picture of LeBron and Paul George joining Alonso. Can they do it? Well actually, better yet, we'll discover in this rebuild, do they need to? Or is there another path? So first things first, we begin with some uh, insane problems. The 2K18 Los Angeles Lakers does not own their first round pick, so we don't own our first round pick. That means that there's no point to tank because there's absolutely no reward at the end of the tunnel since we don't have the pick. So this kind of changes the entire mindset and the goal that I have for the team. So essentially, since I can't tank, so I might as well use this season to figure out who's a baller and I'm gonna try for the AC. I'm gonna compete because there's no point not competing. So what I do know is that Luo Dang is not a baller and alongside with Mr. Dang, Julius Randle is also not really a big baller. I need to trade these guys because especially Rando because I can't pay him. As you can see, after this year, his contract is over. So if I pay him, I can't keep the cap room. So since I can't pay him, I'm not gonna keep him. So I'm gonna trade Luo Dang and Rando from the get-go. And yes, welcome to the brutal world of 100 trade difficulty. You will not find a decent one-sided trade here at all. Unlike the other rebuilds you see, that makes no sense. But still, you get some trades and our goal is to get some youth and also cheap contracts. So Chandler Parsons and Baldwin is not the way to go. Lopez and Miritech sounds really nice, even though we're giving up a second extra round, second round pick. But the thing is, they're both expensive, and Miratek will need to be resigned, and Lopez is very expensive, so that doesn't work. The real goal is we need to get a young piece to replace Rando. At the same time, we need a cheap contract, right? So the Hawks gave us the exact deal we needed, even though the players aren't that great. We get Deadman, who is a cheap two-year contract to act as a backed up center to Lopez. And we're gonna get John Collins, uh, the current year first round number 19 pick. Not very high ceiling, but he will replace Rando even though he's a much worse player now. But we get to save the money, we lose the second round pick in the process, but I did do this deal, so I traded Rando and Dang and a second round pick for Collins and Deadman. And this essentially created our starting five. It puts it in stone where we're gonna start Ball, Coel Poe, Ingram, Lopez, and we're gonna start Lance to replace Rando. So in Larry Nance, we trust and hopefully this is not gonna hurt us in the end. And you better be like, Sam, you're crazy. This is not gonna work. Especially with the simulator difficulty increase and everything so hard. Well, in any other hands, probably not. But because I have always played my reboots this way, I'm used to this insanely difficult environment and I know how to survive in it. So I play them differently. And what I do to make everything work is I adjust player tendencies, just tendencies and nothing else to make the team play in a system that I want them to. I make sure players play together in an ecosystem and a basketball system. So I change the way they play. So I'm turning Larry Lance into a mid-range camping phase up four. I'm gonna do that with changing his tendency. And what I'm also gonna do for him is I'm gonna make sure he crashes the glass and he plays aggressive defense. But on the offensive end, I'm also gonna change his tendency so he's allowed to handle and drive. But he's gonna get zero post-ups and he's gonna get no jump shots. He's not gonna be allowed to take any jump shots. So that's what I'm changing Larry Lance into, the ideal power I think for my system. And as for backup power forward, it's gonna be a fight between Collins and Kuzma. So I'm gonna figure out throughout the rest of the year, I'm gonna get each of them 12 minutes to see who's gonna work out better. And in terms of Jordan Claxton, his role is gonna become the score first six man of the team. That's his job, and I'm gonna make sure he plays it the way I want him to by once again changing up his tendencies a little bit. Nothing too extreme, just a little tweaks here and there to match the team. So I'm not gonna let him shoot any, not that many spots up from uh, the mid range or from deep, but I'm gonna make sure that he does attack the rim non stop and he's allowed to shoot pull ups 
off pick and rolls in the mid range, but not from threes. So my main question comes down to what do we do with our star and our future Lonzo Ball? How are we going to change his tendency to make him fit into the system we have envisioned for this team? So, surprisingly to me, I did not know this, but Lonzo Ball apparently starts the game off with an 83 open three point shot and an 80 contested free ball. That's insane. I didn't know 2K gave him these ratings. So, my goal with this is that I'm going to allow him to transition freeze with his tendencies. I'm also going to let him see a lot of looks, take a lot of pull up three point shots off the pick and roll. And most so my goal most importantly is to pretty much turn Lonzo into a three point heavy point guard facilitator that also crashes the glass. That's my goal for Lonzo. Brook Lopez is obviously gonna he's the veteran of the team, he's gonna be our primary scoring option and he is the stretch five. So I'm gonna make him take a lot of frees. So hopefully he shoots well, I'm gonna let him do. And I uh, will use him as trade bait because I have no interest in keeping him really because I need his cap space to you know sign free agents next year. But I do want him to play well because I want to compete and I want to see how, how Nance and Ball and everybody else plays around Lopez or around another primary score. But the goal is to help him play well so we can use him as trade bait. And in the end, we have our 10 man rotation set. The starters were already discussed, but off the bench, we got Enos, Clarkson, Kuzma. And the forgotten Hawks guy, Collins and Deadman that we got in the rando trade. So we do have a full out 10 man rotation. And uh, our offense is going to be a pick and roll heavy attack with Lopez, Clarkson and Ball as our free primary scoring option to help us find or get buckets. And our defense is going to be the all world switch defense because we have Ball, Contavious, Caldwell, Pold, Ingram, and Nance as our point guard to power force. So I'm gonna let them play a all switch defense, protect the paint, and uh, run in transition and crash the glass a little bit. We're gonna play at a high pace, but I will make this our all switch crew with Nance, Ingram, and Pope and Ball being able to switch everything. So we pretty much have our goals figured out. The player roles are figured out. If you look at the power rankings, uh, 2K believes we're starting off as a at like a bottom five team. Hopefully we can reach the seventh or eighth seed or at least compete because we have no incentive to lose. So talk is cheap, we first begin with a 30 day simulation to see how our new look Lakers do with Nan starting a power forward with our all switch defense and Lonzo shooting cuts. And after the 30 day simulation, surprisingly actually to me, we did decent. We are seven and 10 and we're sitting at the 10th seed. I mean, after a month, that's not too bad. So I checked the stats in detail. It does seem uh, Lopez and Clarkson have found their roles as the leading scorers of the team, averaging 18.1 for Lopez and 16.4 for Clarkson. Nelly Lance Jr. is playing out of his mind. He's playing crazy two-way ball as you can see. He's averaging 12.2 with uh, f about six about eight rebounds and four assists. And most insanely, he is, if you look at the field goal percentage, he's shooting 55% and he's also averaging two steals and almost two blocks a game. So that's elite, elite NBA defense. Uh, the Alonso three-point heavy experiment has failed miserably. As you can see, he's taken about seven and a half a game and he's working only 2.8. So he's shooting 36%. And his vehicle percentage is down to 39 because of the low shooting three point percentage. And he's shooting a lot, he's shooting about 10 shots a game. So, uh, in turn, because of all the shooting, this is also hurting his assist numbers. He's only averaging about 8.6 and he's playing about 35 minutes. So, that, that's not good. I've, I've done Lonzo wrong. So, I'm going to take him back into the lab and I'm going to change up the tendencies. And I do this all the time with a lot of players on the team. This is just how I play rebuilds because I like to coach. You guys know that. And I like them to play in system. So I take Lonzo back in the lab, I'm going to lower his uh, free point shots by about 35% overall, like the amount he takes. And I'm also going to turn him into more of a drive and kick tendency player, hopefully this will uh, help him out. And I'm also going to remove him from uh, the major scoring duties, he's not going to be the first option, third option scorer anymore. I'm going to give that job to Nary Lance, so in Nas, we trust. Probably not a good idea, but I want to do this because this will allow Lonzo to keep the ball and facilitate a pass to three other scoring options without himself being one. So hopefully that will get his assist numbers up and that should help the growth of the team overall and Lonzo himself most importantly, I feel. And if we check the team stats, uh, not surprisingly, we're a bottom five offense. 
it's gonna be hard to find offense on this team because we don't have any elite scores and we're relying on two kind of row scores to become the leading scorer. So we're bottom five offense, scoring about 103 points per 100 possession. So that's pretty bad. But surprisingly, we're a top 10 defense. If you can see, we give up about 107 points uh, per 100 possessions. But we're actually in a, we're pretty elite. Top 10 in the NBA, so we're the top one third of a defense in the NBA alongside some pretty good teams there. So this means the all switch crew that we have designed is working. So trading rather was a good idea. Go Larry Nats. So the all switch crew of uh, Ball, Pope, Nance, and Ingram are very successful defensively. And as you can see here, they actually score decent with all of them in double figures. And the Hawks guy we traded Randall for, the forgotten Hawks guy of Collins and Deadman. In limited minutes are also playing great as you can see with 5.6, 4.8 and they're big so they're getting good rebounds. But the all switch crew is impressive with all of them in double figures and delivering us a top 10 defense. Pope and Ingram I actually made no tendency changes so I only changed the tendencies of the players I showed you. I like to do this also in my rebuild because I believe some players need to fit organically and that's important because if I change tendencies of every player in my experience it doesn't work. I need to change the tendencies of the key players and then let, leave everybody else the way they are to see who fits in organically the best. And Pope and Ingram seem to be doing a decent job of that. So we decided to uh, do one week later because it's a big game and we beat the Golden State Warriors by free. Can you believe this? Look at the box score. We beat them by free here in a fourth quarter comeback. Lopez is playing great, shooting a lot, but he has no choice because that's the job we gave him. But it seems like we had might have created the right system and roles for everyone because they seem to be producing in stats that uh, is leading towards what we're aiming for. You can see Nance is a uh, turnover prone because we're letting him handle a lot, but he's helping, so he's growing, so that's good. Boss assist numbers are climbing. Clarkson is doing his uh, score only job with no rebound and no assist. And a Collins, surprisingly, seems to be outplaying Kuzma here, so that's a surprising turn of events. But it seems like we are finding the right system. So we go. I decided to go one month later. And uh, see, this is why you don't base anything off one win because I spoke too soon. After the Warriors victories, we went down a trash bin. We ended up after a month later, after 36 games of the year, so we're 14 and 22, sitting at the 11th seat. The increased simulator difficulty is merciless. So I decided uh, it's time to adjust and we need to innovate a little bit. I am going to uh, give Collins the job at the backup power forward because in this, in our rebuild, he has outplayed Kuzma for us. So sorry Kuz, but we're going to give Collins the minutes. And at the same time, we're going to lower uh, Ingram's minutes and give more minutes to Lopez, Clarkson and Nance because they do seem to be playing well and Ingram is doing not very good. So I'm going to increase uh, their minutes. So as you can see, Kirkson has been increased. Uh, Naz also at 35, Lopez at 30, and at Ball and Coel Pop also increased to 35. So I decided from this since we're doing pretty bad. I'm going to sim through the trade deadline and if it fails, I'm just going to fire. So everybody, I'm just going to trade the pieces I want to trade. So I went ahead, not expecting much, sim it to the uh, trade deadline. As you can see, we actually got to a winning record. We are now 27 and 26 after the changes we made. We went 13 and 4 in 17 games and we're now one and a half games back for the freaking eighth seed. We're one and a half game back on the Portland Trail Blazers. So uh, we're still a bottom five offense, so the improvement was not from the offense. But with the decreased minutes of Ingram, we actually became the number one defense in the NBA with a defensive rating of 102.8. And this is mostly because Nary Lance has become a boss. He's averaging 15 and a half, 9 rebounds, 4 assists, 2 steals, 1 and a half blocks, and only 3 turnovers and shooting 55%. So he has become a two-way boss. And the all-switch crew alongside the Forgotten Hawks guys are also playing great defense all together. Ingram scoring has gone down, but everybody else increased, so that's a good sign. And Larry Nance is a god. So I decided no trades will be made at this point, and we're just gonna gun for the 8th seed, because why not? We don't have our pick. And we're gonna see, you know, we're gonna convince the, you know, the stars that they want to come. That we're, we're a good team. So at this point, we're one and a half games back on Portland, and there's a game against them at Lakers. So we, we gotta play them. So I'm gonna go to Simcast, and hopefully we can catch up on the Trailblazers and crack into that eighth seed. 
So to the Simcast we go. And it was a very close game. We were down at halftime, but we came, we blew them up in the third quarter and the second half. And we came back. And as you can see, the box score, we're now half a game back on the Portland Trail Blazers. And Clarkson and John Collins is giving us a, a go ahead to replace Kuzma because he is freaking nuts. In 24 minutes, he's going 22 and 10. He has no tendency change by me. So he's fitting in beautifully organically. As you can see in this game, Nery Lance played out of his mind. 18, 11, 5 assists and 4 freaking steals. No turnovers, shooting 8 of 17. Let's go, Nery Lance! So I decided we're going to sim to the end of the season. Since we're doing decent, hopefully we can hold on to that 8th seed. And we do with a record of 44 and 38. We have gotten to the 8th seed with all that hard work. And we're going to get swept by Golden State Warriors. But I don't care. And the Rookie of the Year award goes to Lonzo Ball going 12.6 points, 6.1 points, rebounds, 10.7 assists. So we do got his assist back up. Excellent steals number at 2.6. Decent field goal percentage around 45. And a respectable 3 point percentage for a rookie at 39.5. And, and another award also goes to the Lakers. Most improved player goes to Mary Nance Jr. 16 points, 9 rebounds, 4 assists, 2.5 steals, 1.5 blocks, shooting an insane field goal percentage of 515. So the tendency change we made to Nance, even though his rating isn't all that high, is playing off perfectly. We have made the perfect Nary Lance tendency change. And Paul and Nance apparently are undeniable two-way forces. They're decent, they're multi-talented, and they're both on all defensive first team. No wonder we have the top NBA defense. Paul and Larry Nance Jr. are first team all NBA defenders because of the tendency changes and the system I have built for these guys to play in. And the season summary for everybody else, Clarkson ended up uh, outdueling Lopez and became the leading scorer of the team. Lopez at 18.3 is uh, resectable. Larry Lance is blowing everybody's expectations out of the water. <laughs> 16 points, damn. Colwell Pope organically fits in great at 15. Lonzo is going for a triple-double and decent rebound at a... Uh, 12 points, 10 assists, and 6.1 rebounds. The Hawks guys are doing great. Collins, a beautiful surprise to me. I wasn't expecting this from him. In limited minutes, he's averaging, for a rookie, he's averaging 9.6 rebounds. That's all I can ask for. Ingram was a little bit disappointing, but that's the way it is. Devin, the backup center, not doing much, but hey, Collins is doing good. Devin was a side piece, and he's a reliable side piece. So we get ready to get swept by the Lakers. I go to the Simcast and the War, I mean the Warriors. Getting swept by the Warriors. And we were actually up at halftime. But unfortunately, the Warriors will be the Warriors. We get blown out. But uh, Colwell Pope uh, is showing us some promise. 11 of 21, 4 of 7 from deep, and scoring 31 points, leading the way for the team, even though we're playing playoff minutes. I decided to sim game two, and for some reason, we won game two at Oracle Arena. I don't know how, but someone sent this box score to Paul George and LeBron, so they'll come in the free agency. Luke Lopez almost went for a triple double here. Carwell Pope played great again, and Clarkson's doing their job. Lonzo with double double, and Nery Lance playing insane, but uh, the turnovers are becoming a problem for him, as we have discovered, so we're gonna work on that in the offseason. But hey, we won a game, so we're not gonna get swept. We won by one, but we're not gonna get swept. So I decided to sim, uh, simcast the Lakers game. Warriors are killing us in halftime, but in the second half, we come back. We actually won by 10, and our defense at this point, I realize, is no joke. We're up 2 1, and you can see this is happening. We're doing great. Nary Lance Jr. had 15 and 15. Lopez is going. Lonzo had 17 and 14. So not only are they first team all NBA defenders, Ball is going to score and assist a little while Naz is going to rebound and score a little. So we have found, we have ran into two really good players. And in this series, Koa Pope in the playoffs, so these are playoff averages, Pope is playing out of his mind with zero tendency changes by me. He's averaging 19 and uh, almost 90 and a half points, four rebounds, three assists, and a half and a, one and a half steals against the Warriors in three games in the playoffs. So this means, uh, to me, by my standards, I would define Pope as, you know, become a true organic fit to the system with no tendency changes fitting alongside beautifully with everybody that I did make tendency changes for. But the Warriors will be the Warriors. We got crushed in game four. We lost by 15 with Clarkson leading the way. Ball and Nance is, uh, they, they did decent, but 
Pope as uh, coming, Pope is also the decent, but he's coming back to reality a little bit. And we got wrecked the game, wrecked again in game five. So now we're down three, two. <sighs> Warriors are gonna be Warriors, are gonna be good. So I decided to why not Simcast game six, just you know, four two is an impressive. But we were leading in the first quarter, we lead in the first half, they come back. But by the fourth quarter, we beat them. Contavious Pope, well, Pope wins game six for us, shooting freaking 50% for 29 points. Low pass once again does great. Nary Lance is being his multiple self. Kirkson kind of cool down here, and Ball had a bad game. But boy. We are going to Game 7 against the Warriors in the first round with all that difficulty increase. This is Game 7 at the Oracle. The All Switch crew is doing their work on defense. The unwanted Hawks guy are trying their best after a long season. I can't believe we're actually here. Larry Nance is in Nance we trust. And the son of LeVar, Alonzo Ball, is also playing great. We're fighting. Pope is doing good. Purple and go, but in the end, the fourth quarter, we just couldn't do it in the second half. The Warriors eliminate us in game seven. They blow us up by like 23 points. So it's one of those seven game series where they were just teasing us. But hey, seven game series nonetheless. At this point, when I was playing this, my heart was actually aching. I'm not kidding. Like, to go through all of that, all those changes, all those adjustments, and to see them do so well, only to come one game short and get blown out at the last game. And we lost to the eventual champions. We were the only team to take them to seven games. Ah, it's okay. Well, season in review. Brook Lopez is the leading scorer. He was great. These are the final uh, playoff stats, as you can see there. But there is no question that we will be renouncing Brook because he has a cap hold of $34 million. If we don't renounce him, we can't sign any free agents. So thanks for your service, Brook. But you will be renounced for cap room. And you can see everybody else, these are the playoff stats. And uh, Pope just did so well. Ball and Nance once again, two-way forces that both averages double-doubles. Larry Nance scores and averages double-double points and rebounds. Ball scores a little and averages a double-double with points and assists. They're both elite defenders for some reason. Perfectly amazing system that I designed or switch with all that. They become amazing defenders that does rebound, assists, and scoring. So they're carrying us and they are the future. And like I said, Colwell Pope is giving me some problems now because he plays so great as an organic fit with no tendency changes next to Ball and Nance who has heavy tendency changes. If we renounce both Lopez and Pope and we trade that man, we have enough cap room to go for LeBron and Paul George. But this Pope thing is killing me, so I don't know about him yet. But first thing first, I decided to uh, go for you know Paul George right away because he is the free agent and for all intents and purposes, he wants to come to the Lakers. So I offered him a max contract at 30 million plus a year for four years of no trade cost. He Paul George agreed. So the last thing left to do at this point was to either renounce Pope and trade Deadman and gamble on LeBron coming, or I hold on to Pope and I bet on his organic fit being a better bet on gambling on LeBron coming. This was a very tough decision. I spent a lot of time thinking about it. Let me know what you would do in the comment section. But I took the path that was less traveled. I kept Pope. <laughs> and I gave him about 24 million a year on average. That's what he asked for. I believe, for me, organic fit is important. The way I play, the way I do rebuilds, organic fit is crucial. Because of the tendency changes I make. And I can't do trades, right? Because unlike the other rebuilds you see on YouTube, they have stupid, stupid, and I'm gonna say stupid, stupid trades. I saw some team trader, I saw a user play a rebuild and they got Devin Booker in a trade. Yeah, good luck getting Devin Booker in any trade. So I, I can't do that, trade negotiation is at 100, so I have no, I can't lean towards building a team, a winning team, a championship caliber team with hoping 2k will give me stupid trades because that's a stupid cheating, I don't do that. So I try to build a team organically by changing tendencies and building correct systems. So someone with like Pope who fits organically with no changes, two guys who I have made tendency changes and the system I have built for Lopez, I mean so for, for, for Nance and Ball. Pope is too valuable, I'm gonna sign him, keep his capital, I, I get to keep that man too, so that's a plus. So, thanks for being here, 
a new year is upon us so make sure you stay tuned for season two if you, i was trying to do one season an episode because i do make a lot of changes so each of the season is filled with a lot of stuff so if you guys want to see season two let me know i will be doing that video and our family please give me some feedback on the way i do rebuilds i actually love doing these so if you guys like these rebuild stories i do please let me know in the comment section add me a like i play these regardless on my own and with family and friends and they help me a lot because you know tutorials can sometimes burn me out because they take a lot of creative energy and a lot of grinding so hopefully you guys enjoy watching these rebuilds i know i've never really shown you guys that i do rebuilds but i do and you know i'm serious the way you see i play it like i've been doing this for years and i've always done this i hate abusing the trade i don't do it because 2k and 100 trade difficulty actually makes realistic trades so I've been doing this forever, ever since I can change trade difficulty, trade difficulty, I've made it to 100. And I even before then, when you can't do it, I've been playing like I only do realistic NBA trades. So I know how to survive rebuilds without cheating and abusing CPU trades. And that's how I do it. I build detailed systems on defense, on offense, and with player tendencies. I actually did more detail than this, I just, I just couldn't show everything in the video because it's, I don't want it to be like too long so hopefully you guys enjoyed this if you want to see more let me know and let me know if anybody else built you know rebuilds like this by changing systems playbooks and player tendencies all right thank you for watching this i really enjoyed doing it i'll be doing more for you guys over the course of the year mainly tutorials but maybe this maybe rebuilds one or two videos a week so i can just finish the rebuilds i show you guys normally i do about three to five seasons i, I do it till i win a championship so that's the goal here Hopefully I can do it. So if you guys want to see more Lakers in season two, let me know. As always, thanks for coming by. I'll see all of you next time.